you need further evidence that Twilight does not have a good influence on women, look no further than Fifty Shades of Grey. Sound familiar? That's because this trilogy was just the subject of a bidding war between several movie studios, with Universal and Focus Features winning out. And the competition was so tough that author E.L. James got casting and script approval a la J.K. Rowling. Twilight author Stephanie Meyer didn't even get either of those things. So what does Fifty Shades of Grey have to do with Twilight? Well, it started out as Twilight fan fiction. Yes, back when the first Twilight movie came out, E.L. James, not her real name, which is a secret, was a television production executive in the UK who liked to read erotic novels on her commute to work. But while many felt that the first Twilight film was the coming of the apocalypse, it spoke to this married mother of two. She begged her husband to buy her the set of books for Christmas, and he did. What a guy. She devoured them within days, and wanting more, began to write for the first time via Twilight fan fiction websites. Turns out she had a knack for it. Writing? No, even by her own admission, her writing skills were passable at best. But apparently, she could write dirty sex scenes like nobody's business. So much so that she decided to take what she'd written under the pseudonym Snow Queen's Ice Dragon, you can't make this stuff up, and change the names from Bella and Edward to Anna and Christian, and make a print-on-demand deal with the writer's coffee shop, which apparently anyone could do, so aspiring writers get over there. Now, while her online fans were ticked off that they suddenly had to pay for what they could once get for free, the loins want what the loins want, and the book took off like wildfire. Hey, that's what porn tends to do. But what makes Fifty Shades of Grey special is who's buying it. We're talking married women over 30, a prime consumer demographic that's secretly reading this book on their iPads and Kindles. Now, in addition to the movie deal, it's getting a new printing from Vintage Books that has cleaned up the quality of the writing, but not the content, as well as stuck a spiffy cover on it. So can we expect Fifty Shades of Grey to do further damage to the image of vampires and werewolves? Actually, no. Fifty Shades of Grey is about just sex. But not regular sex. It's about something called BDSM, which involves bondage, fantasy power roleplay, and sensory stimulation. The romance angle here is that recent college graduate Anna is a sweet, innocent virgin. And even though Christian wants to do very bad things to her, he is a handsome billionaire slash humanitarian. Of course he is. And of course he begins to fall in love with Anna and see her more as just than a willing sex slave. Yes, it's all the dirty sex a woman could ever want without any of the very real dangers, but instead a path to Prince Charming. And you thought Bella was a bad role model. E.L. James says she wants attractive unknowns for the lead roles, which is actually a good plan, as what name actor would star in a film that will most likely be NC-17. And while hundreds of thousands of women are eating this book up in secret, will they venture out in public to buy a movie ticket? Universal and Focus are betting yes, so much so that in addition to all those approval rights, they also paid E.L. James $5 million. So what do you think of this Twilight evolution? And are you secretly a Fifty Shades of Grey reader? If so, you're anonymous here as well, so tell us why it's so good, and if you think it'll make a good movie. I'm Grace Randolph, and this has been a Movie Bite. You can watch more right now.